Welcome to Dime Scheduler, the graphical resource and project planning solution for the Microsoft Dynamics product suite. Purpose built for ERP, CRM, and other lines of business systems, this solution enables you to plan anything and anyone. For instance, you could plan production and assembly orders, jobs, absences, and any other kind of work that needs to be scheduled. In this short demonstration, I'll walk you through how to schedule a service order using Business Central. Bear in mind that the same functionality is available for other entities and back office systems. First, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the product and show you how it could help your customers to improve their performance and output. You'll notice I have two tabs open in my browser. What you see on screen is our planning solution, Dime Scheduler. As the name suggests, this is where we do all our planning. And in the second tab, we have a standard instance of Business Central. One of the first things you might notice is that Dime Scheduler doesn't look anything like Business Central. That's because it's a standalone app that works alongside the back office system. There's a lot going on here, and I'll get to most of it, but first let's start by checking the list of work that needs to be scheduled. At the top left corner of the screen, there's a component called the Open Task List where each row in the data grid represents a task that needs to be scheduled. The task could be anything from a production order in Business Central to an opportunity in customer engagement or even a custom entity in Power Apps. As far as Dime Scheduler is concerned, it doesn't matter. We can see this clearly in this list that the items with the prefix A represent assembly orders. We can plan absences to plan holidays and sick days there are several jobs marked by the prefix J. And finally, there are some service orders that need to be scheduled. The goal is to empty the list by scheduling every task. To do this, we'll use our trusty planning board, which is at the core of the application. The component consists of two parts. On the left-hand side, we have our list of resources. Just like a task, a resource could be anything, whether a technician, vehicle, consultant, or production line. The point I want to underline is that you bring your own data to the planning tool, and this list is a fine example of that. On the right-hand side, you'll see the timeline and the corresponding resource planning. Those colorful rectangles in the middle are what we call appointments, as they're the tasks that have been assigned to a resource for a certain date and time. Other components on screen are useful to find the right resource for the job. For example, the map could help us find a technician that is close by for an urgent project. The third critical element I'd like to highlight is the back office system. Systems like Business Central provide the necessary information so the planner can do his work. Without data, Dime Scheduler wouldn't be very useful. Bearing that in mind, let's quickly head over to Business Central and create a service order. What I'm about to show is just standard BC so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'll create a service order for customer one and Business Center will populate a series of fields automatically. And I'll do two more things to make this service order ready to plan. By default, the service order type is used to show the background color of the appointment in the planning board. The background color of an appointment is essentially a visual indicator that makes it easy to distinguish between different types of work. For example, when I select the type service, We'll see in a minute that when we plan this order, the color will be red. Having said that, it's easy to change this behavior, and you can basically use any other field at your disposal to control this visual indicator. Next, I'll add an item that needs to be repaired. Let's say this customer called and said it's rather urgent. So what we'll do is mark this service item as high priority. There's a second visual indicator on the appointment that can display a certain status of the task. For service orders, we use this indicator to display the repair status code of the service item. When we plan the task in a minute, we'll see that the horizontal bar at the bottom of the appointment will be blue. Now that our service order is ready, we need to make it available in the planning tool. If we head over to the Actions menu in the ribbon, we have a submenu, Dime Scheduler, that contains two actions. When we send it to Dime Scheduler, 
We're basically saying that the order is ready to plan and execute subsequently. When I click the button, the order will be available for planning in Dime Scheduler. I'll close BC and come back to it in a second after we've finished planning order 92. Now that the task is available in the open task list, it's Dime Scheduler's time to shine. By providing the planner with the tools, it can find a resource that's available and qualified to carry out the work. For example, if I select our order from the list, the map will readjust it to show the location of the job. This will help the planner to search for and assign nearby resources. Whereas the dark blue pin shows the location where the order must be executed, the light blue pins show nearby resources. You can use this to map out a route and determine whether that resource could make a detour to squeeze this order into their calendar. Another way to find a qualified resource is by using our flexible filtering system. By adding requirements to a task, you could look for a resource that is qualified or has the attributes you need. If you have this data available in BC, virtually all of this can be done automatically. For our order, if I click on this filter button, the resource filter component will populate the requirements and filter out all the resources that don't meet the criteria. If the criteria are too strict, you could always modify the query, reapply it, and get more resources that can be considered for the job. Once you've found a resource, all you need to do is assign the task using the drag and drop feature. Simply drag the task, drop it onto the designated resources timeline, and there you go, the task has been planned. I would like to explain briefly what we're seeing here. As mentioned, the background color is linked to the service order type. The underscore represents the repair status code, and the warning triangle shows the priority of the service item. There's quite a bit happening behind the scenes. In fact, every time you do something on the planning board, the associated back office system will be notified. What happens next depends on the type of work that is scheduled. For this service order, a resource allocation line will be created that holds the exact same information as the appointment we see in the planning board. There are several shortcuts for this in the application. If I open the context menu of this appointment and go to the links, I can navigate directly to the service order in BC. Next, when I open the resource allocation lines table, you can see that it corresponds to the appointment we've just planned. You also have the option to synchronize the appointments in the planning board to the designated resources outlook calendar. As it happens, I've got Linda Martin's calendar open and you'll see that the appointment pops up in her calendar too. The message flow that I just showed can also go the other way, meaning that data from the back office system can flow back into Dime Scheduler. For example, let's say that our technician, Linda, has arrived at the customer site and she's about to start working. To indicate this, she sets the repair status code to in process. When this happens, Dime Scheduler will be automatically updated and the horizontal bar at the bottom of the appointment will change from blue to yellow. In case you were wondering, it's the same story for Exchange. It's possible to synchronize your resources outlook calendars back to Dime Scheduler so that the planner has a complete overview of the entire workforce's scheduling. Speaking of getting a complete overview, our capacity reporting component can detect bottlenecks and enable the planner to optimize the resources schedules. When you look at the current schedule, you might think that all is well, but if you look at it from another perspective, you might discover one or more scheduling conflicts. When I select the capacity grid component and slide it down so that we can also see the planning board and then calculate the capacity report, we'll see that Alex Turner is overbooked by one hour. The number is the difference between the capacity that's managed in BC and the actual planning that was done on the planning board. By marking the problematic slots in red, over allocated resources are flagged and can easily be detected. When we reassign an appointment and then refresh the report, the planning conflict will be resolved and we will have a better distribution of the resources capacity. This was just a quick tour of how you can plan a service order using Business Central. Although there's so much more that Dime Scheduler can do, I hope this gave you a good overview of its functionality and how it can help you or your customers streamline their administration 
and increase their output and performance. For more information or to get a free demo, go check out dimescheduler.com. Dime Scheduler. Stop puzzling. Start planning. Thank <music> you.